So, um, yeah, with the remaining time, sorry about this, we're going to try to cover the um, JET script, how to round uh, MCMC simulation for the model that we talked about. So, if you remember, um, last time we were looking at um, a two stage prior when we were trying to do a hierarchical modeling. So, the two stage priors we have done in this particular case that we did, it's going to be um, so the sampling model is um, normal, and we're putting the same prior for all of the means, uj. So that's why we have the step one prior distribution for the uj is uh, equation 21 here. And we're giving uh, the mean and standard deviation mu and tau, respectively. The last time we talked about how to use or how to choose the values for mu and tau, okay, especially uh, if you get the chance to see the data. So, um, so that's for the stage one. Stage two is we further going to give um, hyperprior um, for the um, particular two hyperparameters. So what we're going to do is we, by conjugacy, we're using equation 23 and 24. So as you can see here, um, I'm giving mu to be 0.1 because when we were looking at the data, we know that the range, I would say the mean, um, of all of the draws, uh, I mean, the range of the data, the rating is between 0 and 23. So, um, um, okay, yeah, so then uh, we give, um, so in this case, I give tau to be 0.5, which is probably pretty big if you consider how big your mean is, but you can even give it bigger, uh, bigger value for tau, but so you can try with different values, but for the demonstration, we're going to use these two values. Uh, for the gamma prior, hyper prior, we say for tau, tau square, one over tau square, we're giving a pretty uh, weakly informative prior gamma one one. Okay, so that's the standard deviation for the prior of the mean. Okay, so keep in mind that's what the tau is for. And lastly, for sigma, so sigma remember is still is the shared commonly shared prior that we have uh, for the standard deviation of the likelihood. And we give a also give a weekly informative prior gamma one one for that one over sigma squared. Okay, so that's the entire setup that we have now. So in terms of writing JAX code, so I'm going to pause here for a little bit so you can read through um, the model string. So remember, when we're working with JAX, we write a model string in a sense that we put the script of the model first. Okay, so we always write, like say, the likelihood as part of it as a chunk, the prior as a chunk. In this case, we have hyperpriors in the model that we have. So you, you, cre you create one more chunk for the hyperpriors. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to read this through and then just think it through how um, this is being done. And I would like to highlight a couple of things here. So notice how we're using the schedule vector because we want to make sure that each schedule has a specific mean. Okay, so think about how you can code that. So the one that I'm presenting here is one way to do it. And for the priors, you can see that we have priors for mu, each of the mu j. And also, don't forget, you have prior for sigma, OK? And for the hyper priors, it's going to be the mean, uh, sorry, the normal prior that we give for each of the mu j. So that's what the mu and the tau we have, OK? So I'm going to um, pause here for a little bit. You might want to maybe just have a quick discussion with your neighbor just to see through. There are multiple loops going on in this case because we have a slightly more complicated model. So convince yourself that. Uh, this um, Jack script makes sense to you and um, ask any questions you might have. All right. Yeah, so, really quick, oh, add um, something. I just wrote down like the model, like in the way that was a pre write on the right. So, maybe you can try to uh, match uh, like side by side to see what's going on and also pay attention to um, the range of the loop as you were discussing. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Caroline asked a question. Um, in the model, when we write, is normal, say in this case, for the mu j's, uh, they're iid normal mu tau. So when we write the model typically, we use mean and standard deviation for the normal distribution. But for uh, what, um, I think we covered this at some point, when we're doing the JAX script for the normal model that we did. So remember, whenever you're using d norm, <coughs> yeah, okay, so only in JAX. Whenever you're using D norm, you have to fit in the mean and precision. Right? So that's why you see this kind of uh, treatment that uh, you define 
the precision in some way, okay? but later say, I actually want to know what, gamma, what sigma is, and in this case, so this is in the likelihood, right? We are using one over sigma squared, because that's what the precision is that is needed for, for the denorm function. But then down here, I'm trying to give a prior for this um, one over sigma squared to be a gamma. So here, that's why we have inverse or in, in sigma two to be a d gamma, a g and b g. But lastly, because I actually care more about sigma itself, not so much one over sigma squared. So you can use this. So this is square root and this is power. So I'm trying to take the inverse of inverse sigma two and then take the square root of that. I can always return sigma itself. Okay, so you can do it here, like in the model stream, because later you can use it to monitor. Like say, I want to know about sigma instead of inverse sigma squared. So that will be my uh, comment uh, on that. So anybody, so similarly down here, you do the same thing. Okay, so tau, you want to give the precision for the d-norm function. And then that's why down here you will have to do like d gamma for inverse tau squared, but then you return tau instead, and then track and monitor the JEX uh, script to do that. So you will see that later when we round the actual JEX code. Okay. So one more, maybe I was at a, ask a question over here, two questions. So one thing you notice that is we are doing the loop, in this case, one to n, however, uh, in this case is one to j. So does it make sense to you? in this case. Mm -hmm. Anybody wants to give a quick comment, your thoughts? And then I guess related to that, for the prior, because we do have mu j, there are j numbers of mu, right, for the mu j's. So the loop goes from one to j, that's fine. For the likelihood, remember, we actually write this. So it's iid normal of mu j and sigma, right? So in fact, I guess if uh, intuitively we we're trying to write this particular part of the model, we might want to do a nested loop, right? Because you have the J and then you have the I, okay? But uh, in order to like avoid writing loops, because usually loops are where uh, the computation time takes a lot, uh, what we can do is we can write only one loop. And notice what I'm doing over here. So mu J is the vector, okay? Recording all of the mu J's. Okay. And in order to get the correct mu j that I'm working with for the particular drama i, I actually need to use the schedule i so I can get the schedule. So remember, if schedule is one, two, three, four, right? So I can correctly grab the correct index of the drama that I'm looking at because each drama is corresponding to a particular schedule. Okay. So you can do a nested loop. Uh, but this will be another way that uh, instead of writing a nested loop, you can just write one loop. But in this case, you're looping through all of the observations. So capital N is the number of uh, dramas that you have over here. Okay. Yes, Josh. Uh, what is the data structure for mu j? Is it like a matrix? Or? Yeah. So for mu j, it's going to be a vector. Oh. Yeah. And for schedule, right. So uh, let's see. So y is going to be passing from the data. So later you're going to see the data argument that we're trying to pass it to um, to the to, to JEX. And schedule will just be another vector that we pass to JEX as well. So in this case, there are, I will say, two vectors of data, <coughs> both of them of length n. So y and schedule, both of them are going to be length n. And the mu j, like what Josh is asking, it's going to be um, 1 by j or j by 1, whichever. It's just going to be how many um, schedules are there. Okay? And uh, inverse sigma squared is going to be a scalar. Okay? Nothing about the index, it's just going to be a scalar. Uh, pretty much everything else is a scalar, I think. Okay? Make sense? Okay. Anything else before we move to the other parts of the JEX? Yes? Um, so what is the number for capital J? Right, so capital J in this case is going to be four. Yeah, because there are four. N, yeah, capital N, I think. Yeah, good question. So N in our sample is 33. Oh, there are 33 number of dramas. And capital J is four, which is the number of schedules that we have. But so can you call schedule sub seven? Uh, That's what I'm confused about. Is oh, it I four see. Schedules yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so this J by one is for uh, mu J. The schedule will still be n by one. 
because so yeah so you will see it soon when we try to pass the data in a second that uh, we have the rating right so rating itself so each drama has a rating right so the rating vector going to be m by one right yeah. and then we also going to create this schedule vector which is from the sample i mean as well it's going to be m by one as well so we have schedule seven is the seventh drama but the schedule output would be one or two or three or four. Mm -hmm. So it's holding the, for the high value. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the schedule for that item. Uh, so it's not the collection of schedules. It's no, the yeah, value it's of the, the value of the schedule. For okay. that. Right, right. right. So right. So that's why I say I guess I was saying earlier that typically people might write a nested group, so then you don't have to like you can just do in that case, one through J, and then within each of the J, you're gonna do one through NJ, where NJ is the number of dramas in that schedule. Yeah, but this is, I would say, um, well, we don't have a large data set, so it probably doesn't matter that much, but this is the typical way that people avoid writing nested loop, because you can pass the data in this original, um, so this is our Y, and this is just our schedule. So you can still pass them in the way that they were coded, but then you can call them using the index. Okay. Anything else? All right, okay, if not, let me show you uh, the rest of the stuff. So I have this one extra slide uh, for you to maybe later read on about, well, exactly what you need to pay attention to when you're writing JAX code for this particular um, case. And uh, all right, so pass the data and the hyperprice values to JAX. So uh, we get the data, the rating to Y. The schedule is actually just the schedule column from the data set. Okay, so it's going to be n by 1. n is the length of y, so that's how many uh, dramas are there. j, you can do length of the unique value of schedule, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So um, j is going to be 4. Okay? So I should say um, in the previous slide, uh, the model, let's like say, I would say, except for like schedule, that particular word, everything else uh, sort of can be adapted to a different um, like hierarchical model pretty easily, because later you can just pass over the other specific, um, yeah. So if you want to make it even more um, general, you can just rewrite the schedule to be group, and then later just define your group in whichever context that you're working with. Okay. All right. Uh, also, uh, okay. So this are the Y schedule and a J part, and this is um, actually trying to make uh, reproducible results uh, using the init function. So something about JAX is that even if you write a set seed inside it, it doesn't take you. Okay, you will have to produce something extra. And this is a typical way that you can use this in this function. You can just copy what I have typically, and then you'll be able to uh, reproduce the results that you need. Okay, so typically in R, you can just do set seed, like what we see in the Monte Carlo approximation. But for JAX, using JAX itself, you have to do something else, but we call this in this function. So later we're going to pass that into the initial values in the writing, uh, in the final running part. So the data, like what we did before, you need to have Y, after you have schedule, the N, and the J, and also, so all of this are the particular values that we gave um, for those normal and the gamma prior and hyper prior. And so um, again, the previous slide when we wrote the uh, model string is trying to be pretty flexible or general in a sense that you can always change those values outside of the function. So that function will be um, easy to be adapted to the other uh, types of hierarchical model that you're going to work with. All right. All right. So lastly, you use this run JAX function. So notice that we're running one chain. In this case, uh, data is the data um, string that we created before. And there are multiple parameters. So there's this mu, that's the hyperprior for the mean, okay? The tau, the hyperprior for the mean as well. And in fact, you can just say that I also want to monitor all of the mu j, so there are actually four of them. So later you're gonna see that you're gonna have four different vectors for the mu j. And lastly is the sigma, okay? So we do 1,000 adept, burning, 5,000 sample, 1,000. Uh, you can always start with thing one because uh, you can change that after you look at the all correlation function. Okay? But to get started using one is fine. And this is uh, what I meant earlier that if you want to reproduce your results, you have this init um, option here, and then you can create that from the function that you just did. Okay? All right, so let's look at some of the results. And uh, I want you to maybe critically thinking about well, are there any 
interesting things popping up uh, based on the results that you can see here. So this is the summary of the posterior. So we have seven different parameters here. Okay? Mu tau, mu j1234, and sigma. Anything jumps out um, from the summary. I have other plots uh, coming up, but maybe we can pause here for a little bit so you can uh, take a look and maybe anything you find interesting or maybe unreasonable popping up, anything is, is welcome. Okay. You can check with the neighbor. All right, anyone, any comments? I mean, what are the things that you uh, will pay attention to? based on the posterior um, summary, or anything you think is weird that might not make much sense. That what might, is, yeah, go ahead. What does MCER mean? Oh, right, yeah, so that, um, so that's actually something we uh, didn't get the chance to talk too much about. It stands for Monte Carlo era. Yeah, so it's more about, yeah, so in this case, um, so that is going to help us, um, so I would say like uh, the effective sample size, I think I overheard some of you talking about a lot. Um, so the MCR, that will just be a particular computation from the chain, okay? So whenever you're doing multicolor, there might be simulation error based on, let's say, how many times you're doing and all that. So. Um, yeah, it is a standard output from um, from the JAX, um, but we for now I think we we don't worry too much about it. Uh, so typically we look at the SSDFF, and I guess you can also look at the middle ninety percent right credible interval. You look at the mean, um, also median if you want, and um, so effective samples are we want it to be high, and in this case all of them are pretty high. So later when we're looking at the autocorrelation plot, you will see that the autocorrelation is pretty low. Okay, so um, yeah. Anything else? I guess, um, what do you think about the relationship between all of the new J's that you can see over here? Because that was one of the things we were trying to get a grasp about, right? Like whether the means are pretty similar to each other or they're very different from each other. So based on the output, what do you think of it? Uh, I think the mean for me is uh, higher than the rest mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. 0 0.19, 0 0.07, 0 0.07. Right, uh, yeah. So if you look at the median and also the mean, and that's not too surprising because we actually saw it in the sample, right? Like a schedule four is having the highest. So uh, I guess it's not too bad in terms of, well, I wouldn't say too bad. It was, it's not surprising in terms of the results. Um, so, uh, since we're right out of time, uh, I would call swap more questions so you can think about, and then uh, next week when we come back, uh, we can keep discussing this. So, my question for you is, you can see that, so mu is the mean of the rating, right? And we know that rating should be positive, whereas it's not negative, right? Yeah, because it's, well, from 0 to 0 0.3, that's what we see. So, one thing interesting popping up when I saw this as well, you have your lower 95%, um, like that cutoff point, is already below zero, okay? So that might indicate, well, probably we'll have to change the model in some way, okay? So my question, just um, for you to think about uh, before next time, is what else you can do, or what kind of things you can do uh, to make sure that you don't get unsensible results, okay? So it might be the whole model that we might change, or maybe just change part of the prior, or like whatever you want to do, uh, just think about it. So um, uh, on Tuesday when we come back, we can continue from here. Okay.